American Motors Corporation, AMC, was the small player in the car market during the heyday of the U.S. auto industry. Today, the only remaining remnant of AMC, which has been defunct for three decades, is Jeep. AMC may have had a small development budget compared to GM, Ford, and Chrysler back in the day, but it still produced some great cars. AMC offered its share of true performance cars during the muscle car era. AMC came to the muscle car party late, but still made its mark. Its most legendary performance car was the 1970 Rebel Machine. The machine was a true muscle car that could compete with such legends as the Pontiac GTO, Chevrolet Chevelle SS, and Dodge Charger RT. The machine was the natural evolution of the AMC muscle car that started with the 1968 AMC Javelin and 1968 AMC AMX. The former competed in the pony car segment while the latter competed in the two-seat performance car segment. To be fair, AMC was the first to drop a performance-oriented V8 engine in a medium-sized car when it released the 327 cubic inch V8-powered 1957 AMC Rambler Rebel. The only reason the Rambler Rebel is not attributed to being the first muscle car was it was only available in four doors. The Rambler Rebel was finally offered in a two-door configuration for the 1967 model year when a newer, larger, mid-sized Rambler Rebel was released. When equipped with the optional 280 horsepower four-barrel carburetor 343 cubic inch V8, the two-door Rambler Rebel was a budget muscle car. Even though it had attractive looks, it still looked too conservative and was a little short on cubic inches to be a serious muscle car. Fast forward to the 1970 model year, the AMC Rambler Rebel was now the AMC Rebel and in two-door form it had a few slight exterior styling updates giving the car a more macho appearance. But it was the addition of the Rebel machine to the Rebel lineup that showed the world AMC was serious about competing in the muscle car segment. AMC would refer to the Rebel machine as the machine which helped to convey the impression this wasn't a muscle car to tangle with but one serious machine. No pun intended. AMC had shocked muscle car fans when it partnered with Hearst to transform the stodgy compact Rambler, which was considerably smaller in size than the Rebel, into a 390 cubic inch V8 powered 1969 SC Rambler, or sometimes referred to as the Scrambler. With the SC Rambler, AMC offered a couple of optional exterior paint and decal themes which were painted in patriotic red, white, and blue. The 1969 SC Rambler was a low production one year only offering. Since the Rambler was replaced by the all new Hornet for 1970, AMC and Hearst collaborated instead for 1970 on the Rebel machine. Standard on the machine were stylish Kelsey Haynes produced five by seven inch wheels with chrome center caps and performance-oriented E60-15 polyglass Goodyear tires. This was something many revered muscle cars in 1970 didn't have, including the 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle SS 454 LS6, which had mandatory 14 by 7 inch wheels and 14 inch tires. It didn't just stop there. AMC slapped just about every performance goodie on the machine as standard that most muscle car buyers wanted. There was a massive functional hood scoop which rammed cold air into the high performance engine. An electronic tachometer was integrated into the back portion of the hood scoop. There was a wild patriotic red, white, and blue paint scheme which was tamer than the previous year's SC Rambler but still was very bold. AMC did offer during the machine's production run different exterior colors with a mandatory black hood. The machine was standard with a heavy-duty Borg Warner T10 four-speed manual transmission. This was impressive since most muscle cars of this time period had a four-speed manual available at extra cost. A limited slip rear axle was standard and available in a 354 or 391 rear axle ratio. 
a three-speed automatic was optional and came mandatory with a 315 rear axle ratio. The heart of the machine was AMC's hottest performance engine, the 340 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque, 390 cubic inch V8. It had a 10.0 to 1 compression ratio, a 690 CFM Motorcraft Auto Light 4300 four-barrel carburetor, and other performance goodies. A free-flow dual exhaust system was standard. All this equated to a 14.4 second quarter mile time which was mighty impressive. However, AMC didn't stop there. It offered a service kit package for only $500 from its network of dealership parts departments. The service kit was purchased mostly by those who wanted to race their machines. This package increased horsepower by at least 100 ponies and allowed the machine to obtain high 12 second quarter mile times. It's a pity that AMC didn't offer the service kit package from the factory. If it had, the machine would have had the honor of being the fastest production muscle car during the original muscle car period. AMC also offered ridiculously low 5.0 rear gears through its dealership parts network. AMC definitely knew its audience when it offered the machine for a base price of only $3,475. It was so much performance for the money. AMC didn't bother with trying to make the Rebel's interior more upscale for the machine. It kept it as spartan as a fleet taxi cab or police car. Only the bare essentials were found inside the machine's cabin. This also kept the machine's curb weight down to a little over 3,600 pounds. The machine was aimed at buyers who wanted serious performance and lots of exterior flash. The sad aspect of the machine was it was a great muscle car that came to the party too late. Muscle car sales by 1970 were tanking heavily due to high insurance premiums. This was one of the factors why only 2,326 machines were produced for 1970. Had the machine arrived on the scene in the mid-1960s, AMC could have been the all-star player during the muscle car time period. AMC for 1971 brought back the machine as the Go Machine package for the 1971 Matador. Its production volume was similar to the 1970 machine. By the mid-1970s, AMC was out of the performance car business entirely. Though AMC may be long gone, the machine still lives on as a muscle car legend.